Hey everyone, Catch em All Collectibles here. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the best time to sell. Turn it on its head, I will also indirectly be discussing the best time to buy in some cases. Uh, I like to make my video so that it kind of applies towards whether you're flipping, investing, co uh, collecting, whether you're a business, whether this is a side hustle. I, I hope that there's something useful or valuable to you in all of my videos, and I'll try to discuss each of these items, uh, all of which I've owned at one point or another, some of which I still own, a little bit of just my thoughts on why and when I decide to sell an item. Uh, most of these items I I've had many of, some not so much, but yeah, first half of the video, I'll stick more with sealed, sealed products, and then the second half, I will discuss graded cards more so. I do have access for anyone uh, unfamiliar with me or my channel. I do have access to wholesale distribution. So a product like Battle Styles, just picking one random box from not too long ago because I think it demonstrates an interesting point. Obviously, if I had this chart when Battle Styles came out, it would have been a much easier play to determine when was the best time to sell. I am working with hindsight in this video, which you will not have. Uh, obviously, you, you will not have a future looking chart to pick out when, when you want to optimize your sale. 150 out of the gate. This was uh, during a time of hard to find product. This was a, a time of FOMO and hype and all the crazy things that were going on. I dumped my whole allocation on eBay for 100, $140 to $150 per box. I remember selling cases for eight to $900. To me, it could have been a situation where, yep, it could have gotten away from me. It could have ran up 200, 250. Who knows? Who knows? Look, look at what's happening with Evolving Skies, which we will look at next. But at the end of the day, kind of getting on the point of a video that might come next week, as soon as next week, if not next week, a couple weeks from now. Analysis paralysis. I could have spent hours trying to figure out whether or not a reprint was coming, what the price was going to do longer term. But the information that I had that I knew, I knew that I paid $86.50 a box and I knew that there were willing buyers nearly doubling up my money. Gross. I mean, even, even netting, netting after shipping, netting after eBay fees, I was making a, a healthy $50 plus a box, which is very atypical in, in the history of Pokemon that I've had wholesale distribution. So for me, that was good enough. In hindsight, it was clearly the right play. I, I didn't know that at the time. In hindsight, it was clearly the, the right play for me. Uh, I, I can't put myself exactly in my shoes then, but one thing, like an overarching theme, I'll kind of show you individual instances where my head was at, why I made the plays I made, but I'll also talk about like the overarching things and concepts about when to sell. Ideally, you sell when you don't have to. Ideally, you sell when something is hot. If something goes up su substantially, you should be more prone to selling it than buying it, in my opinion. Uh, kind of... Uh, Hype-induced, FOMO-induced situation that people find themselves in. Price goes up because price goes up. Price starts to head up on an item. People like to buy more of it so that it can before it goes up again. So that, that's something I try to. If a price goes up, I become more likely a seller. If the price goes down, I become more likely a buyer. And there have been restocks. There have been reprints of battle styles. So I've accumulated more. I do still have a a decent position on battle styles. Nothing that I'm too anxious, like I feel like I need to dump it, get rid of it. It's, it's at 110. That's not a massive margin for me, given my cost basis. But yeah, I was very happy with my initial play out of the gate. And subsequently, I got more down the line. So Battle Styles, in hindsight, I, I optimized pretty well how I handled it. One, the overarching theme that I wanted to mention, the best time to sell, if you, if you need the money, if you have somewhere better to put the money, that's generally just a good time to sell. You never want to put yourself in a spot. I think we talk a lot. I, I talk a lot about ideally being in a spot cash flow wise where you never need to sell. But if you can realize a profit, $150 battle styles booster box and put that somewhere else, put it into a collection buy, put it into grading fees and make money, make more money, more return elsewhere. That's where you want to be. You want to be optimizing your dollars, letting them go as far as possible. Similar. Oh, so here's here's brilliant stars. I forgot I pulled this one up. I thought we were going right into uh, two of all these guys. This one started out a little cooler, but then it's gone up quite substantially recently. I actually was able to sell some boxes around 160, 170. I have almost no brilliant stars left. To me, again, we are a little over a year. A little over a year out, I was able to sell my boxes 
almost doubling up, almost doubling up on gross. That is not uh, very, very commonly. People will look for a rule of thumb. Do you sell your boxes at X amount of months or years? Do you sell your boxes at X or Y amount of percent gains? There's no fixed amounts. But if I make a major collection buy, $50,000 binder buy that I made late 2022, I had some low hanging fruit. I had Brilliant Stars booster boxes. I had Evolving Skies booster boxes that I was set on a lot of profit. Very liquid items, items that had achieved me a very substantial healthy gain and items I could move quickly and easily. So that's what I do. How I sell and when I sell, what I sell is more based on like cash flow considerations. If I've got to fund my IRAs or 401ks by a certain deadline, if I've got to pay a big IRX tax, tax bill, if I find a massive collection that is just atypical for me, purchases, if if a big MetaZoo set is releasing and I have to pay for my allocations, all that, I will fund it with, with just liquid items. I will move certain portions. A lot of times my sales are based more on my purchases just cash flow the ins have to equal the outs i mean a little bit more to an extent because i have to pay myself a salary but yeah battle styles i was able to look at the hindsight chart and talk about how well i did in hindsight on evolving skies i sold too early uh we're at a point where the box is about 400 dollars right now i have one left i believe i i have one left and I sold most mine between 150 and 250. I don't think I sold a single box over 300, maybe not even over 270. But at the end of the day, you can't get stuck looking in the rear view thinking what could have been, oh, oh man, I could have made X amount thousand dollars more. I think at, at, at my peak, maybe I had 12 or so cases of Evolving Skies. So I, I guess if you do, if you do want to look in reverse, if you want to look back at what I missed out on, 200 bucks a box, 10, 15 grand. I'm not going to ruin my day, ruin my week, ruin my month, just stewing over the fact that I lost ten or $15,000 on Evolving Skies because I've made that on a single collection flip before. I've made that on a single single card before. Um, so yeah, you, you can't get lost in it. At the end of the day, I worked with the data I had at the time. And who knows, it, it still could get reprinted. Very, very common bit of analysis paralysis going on. At this point, I'm not going to chase. I'm not going to go back and buy it. I never really do that. I take my allocations that I get at the wholesale pricing. And I sell them when I see fit. I still have some XY era booster boxes. I still have some random Sun and Moon era booster boxes and premium collection products, uh, which I will get into here. Th these first few examples have been more of the ultra modern booster box, uh, talking about how I take my allocation and when I decide to sell them. And uh, here we're going to get into the next few slides. More of a... In, in, uh, a little bit older product. We're going to look in the four to six year range, maybe, if I'm remembering correctly, maybe maybe three to six years out. One thing that a lot of products tend to do, and this is something that I've been kind of bad about historically, I've been a bit of a hoarder. Uh, just recently, I turned up four of these. I forgot I had that many. I turned up four of these, and unfortunately, Pokedata doesn't go back like several years. I love the site. I love the the charts that it gives us. But going back to 2021, uh, August, this item was $444. And as of today, it's $431. So I had four of these that I didn't remember having. And I've sat on them for at least, at least almost two years that they've been flat. Uh, I had them. Th these are original. These are not ones that I bought for an investment. These are not ones that I bought uh, more recently. These were bought whenever they released. Wholesale, allocated in my original... Uh, distribution order and i just kind of like lost them <laughs> and it's a very common theme a lot of items will plateau after some point we, we always talk about the ultra modern is like ultra hype where ultra attention is given in a perfect world if we were able to identify exactly when this plateau would start and who knows is evolving skies plateauing right now is are, are these sets plateauing right now and are they going to sit here for a few years if i knew that if i knew battle styles was going to plateau for the next two or three years i might decide to move the rest of my boxes e even at slight profit if i knew that was going to happen with evolving skies i would be very comfortable not buying any more of it obviously if i thought it, if it was going to team up i think i do have a team up box yep right there if it was going to team up i would buy a bunch of it right now at 400 sell it at a thousand in a year but we just, we don't have that information. To me, that's a lot more speculating gambling. 
I want to work where I have more perfect information. So selling these products that have been kind of flat and who knows, maybe I sell them, maybe I sell them in the coming weeks and then they pop, they pop for whatever reason. But you need to think of why will people pour back into Shining Legends Super Premium Collections when they're getting new premium collections dangled in front of their faces year after year after year, seemingly. With our Charizard Ultra Premium Collection, we had the Hidden Fates ones a few years ago. We have um, we had the Celebrations one last year. It's probably going to become an annual thing. So, yeah, what one thing something like team up does and one theory that i have which gets a little bit into analysis paralysis and i don't spend too much time on it i'll talk about that more next week but uh i think we could find ourselves in a reality where pokemon doesn't reprint the booster box from evolving skies because back of my mind back of everyone's minds is this going to be the next team up i think pokemon wants us every few years to get like that one box that just got away Cosmic Eclipse, Team Up, uh, potentially Evolving Skies. I, I think it's very good for them to have a lot of people just chomping at the bit when a new box comes out, thinking it might have this trajectory and not this one. But who knows? At the end of the day, yeah, I, I have these products. They are significantly higher than I paid for them for my allocation. And I'm at a point where cash flow wise i could use the money in other avenues i i could use the money in a perfect world you would capture as many of these you would capture as many of those first year more parabolic not parabolic but more uh the steeper part of the logarithmic growth curve as you can um celebrations ultra premium collection just another one uh you can see around when it came out it had the the up and down. I, I think we got a big restock that brought it down in that in that valley there. But it's been fairly flat. It's been fairly flat. Um, May of 2022 to today. So a little under a year, I guess. Pretty flat. Um, items like that, I, I'm probably down to, if I had to guess, maybe 12 to 16 left. At one point, I had about 100 units. To me, th that's, again, pending cash flow, pending what collection buys are coming through. I... I I sell more when I have other attractive things to park my money into. So best time to sell is when you don't need to, but uh, you're selling more by choice. You don't have to, but you're doing it to pursue something better. You're pursuing a higher opportunity, a higher yield opportunity, a higher profit margin opportunity. Um, now we've kind of completed the sealed portion. Let's look at a couple. I think these ones are a bit more obvious, though I will throw in kind of the, uh, the exception that proves the rule scenario that, that a lot of people probably know what's coming but these ones are a little bit easier to predict generally speaking there are exceptions but this is one of the most common things that we see this is one of the things that has always been around to some extent um more so exacerbated in the prior years special delivery charizard unfortunately i wasn't first out of the gate i did sell one for 675 dollars so i was right in here somewhere but the standard race to the bottom, hot potato play, whatever you want to call it. The best time to sell a card that is doing this is as soon as possible. A lot of people will, uh, you, you really want to be careful. Obviously you want to pre-grade. You want to make sure you're going to get the 10. Some people will sell with the PSA scans that they give you before they even physically get it in hand. Talk about paper hands. Talk about hot potato. Sell, listing and selling the card before you even get it in hand uh, using the PSA scans. But yeah very common chart that we will see and here's here's a tidbit for buyers patience uh patience because a lot of cards here's the charizard four from celebrations that i talked about recently Th this is so common I, I did it all the way back to evolutions the, the mega full art charizard i was one of the first to market with that i want to say i sold it for three or four hundred dollars out of the gate a few a few weeks a few months later it dropped 60 or 70 percent it's not always going to happen but it very commonly happens. The Scarlet Violet one promo. A lot of people can probably think of, this is the CGC one, but a lot of people can probably think of a million examples. But impatience, there, there's a big impatience premium. There's a, a big FOMO, a big gotta have it, gotta have the first one premium out there. So ideally, if, if you're on either side of the transaction, try to be the one grading it and selling it out of the gate and try to be the one buying it or grading it yourself later on down the line. It won't happen every time. There might be times that you wait for it to fall 
and it ends up either you grab it in here and then it falls further or it never drops and it pops up and then you end up having to pay more. But more often than not, if you give it a decent amount of time, I mean, where are we looking at? We're looking at October 2021, a year later in October 2022, it had fallen 80%. And then it's been relatively flat. If you look from April to April, we've got 318 relatively flat. By relatively flat, I mean only dropping a further 30 or 40%. So you're never going to be able to pick out the exact bottom. On a play like this, you might be able to pick out the exact top if you're the very first one. But yeah, the best time to sell a play like this in ultra modern out of the gate play is almost always as soon as possible. Not financial advice. You could end up selling something that then just 5Xs from there. Uh, let, let me show you the example that you knew was coming. Moonbrian, out of the gate. First first to market on the hot potato play. Sold it for $1,000. Felt like felt like a savant. Felt like uh, the winner won the race. And it did. Uh, vindication. A few months later, it, it fell almost 50% down to $500. This is one of the most atypical charts. It's been talked about so many times. The card is now more the same or more most recent sale looks like 93641 5% less under 10% less than the initial sale out of the gate so and it's and it's peaked 20 30% higher than the initial sale out of the gate so this is a very atypical the exception that proves the rule if you scroll through i mean check out pokey data check out pokemon price there's so many great sources out there for this kind of uh historical price data historical pops this this is more often what happens. Uh, so yeah, you always got to have Moonbrion in the back of your mind. I'm still waiting on what my grade is going to be from the one that I took in trade at Collect Account Orlando. But yeah, uh, the best time to sell in general plays like this. And again, people who sold it for 1050 when the Raws were selling for 220 they still killed it. Like you can't look at this and, and you can't be unhappy. Say you sold it for 636 in August of 2022. Uh, before November of 2022, it doubled. Between August and November, it doubled. But, it, I mean, you sold it for 630 when the raw was half price, grading fees 15 to 50 bucks, depending on what level you send it at. You still killed it. And, and if you put that money into Evolving Skies booster boxes, if you put that money into something else that did well, something else earlier in its, uh, in its curve, if you put it into a collection, a raw collection that you graded it in five extra money on, a lot of people get almost too caught up in some of this because it's all about what you can do with the money elsewhere. And sometimes it's not even within Pokemon. Sometimes it's funding a vacation. Sometimes it's paying off your house. Sometimes it's paying off your student loans, paying off a credit card, buying yourself a, a nice meal. I mean, say you're buying, say you're buying one of these cards, one of these ETBs, and you're able to buy yourself a nice meal. That's a big win. That, that That's a big W. I mean, you got to uh, you got to take some wins here and there. You got to have some fun. You got to enjoy life too. There is life outside of Pokemon, but yeah. One last thing I wanted to talk about the the bubble situation. Um, again, it's very easy in hindsight to say where the top was, and it's easy to say when you should have sold and this and that. I have sold this card. I mean, this is a card I've picked on so many times. Twenty seven hundred PSA tens as of right now. Forty six hundred PSA nines. I was selling this card back in twenty sixteen. When, when it was $40 by now for a PSA 10 and they didn't sell quickly. That was a good price. I, I was grading them for about six or seven bucks. They were worth nothing raw. I, I mean, a dollar raw less. And I could grade them with a high, a high PSA 10 rate. Over the years from 2016 to 2019, I, I was just constant. Like I, I probably sold five or 10 a year. N nothing crazy. It, it wasn't Killing it for me, but it was a, a reasonably high liquidity relative to other things. It was just a popular species people like to have. And then it started running. And I sold them looking looking at April 2020 for 85 bucks, looking at around the new year of 2020, about 70 bucks. It peaked at a thousand. I remember selling some privately for a thousand. I, I sold some for a hundred. And then later in the same year, I sold them for 200, 300, 400, 500, a thousand. The best time to sell is when things feel off. You could be wrong. I sold some for 100. I sold some for 200 in 2020, early 2020. I missed out on $900. I missed out on $800. I missed out on $500. But at the end of the day, I that's the year I paid off my house. That's the year things just felt so crazy. I set the foundation for doing this full time. 
Uh, I could have earned more, more money. I could have gotten really greedy and I could have waited for the bubble to pop. Who knows? I mean, if you had asked me in 2020 how low it was going to go and some of the first content I did on Jake's channel, I'm, I'm John's channel, Pokenomics and Pokemon Radar, I would have thought the card was going to go back to 50 bucks and it's still hanging out at 100 to 200 bucks. So it's doing a lot better than I would have thought. It went a lot higher than I would have thought. At the end of the day, I sold because I had better places for me at the time to put money. 2020, I wasn't buying a lot. I guess I was buying my freedom more than anything. I was paying off my debt and I was getting debt free and I was uh, downsizing a lot of items that, that didn't make sense to me, what the prices they were achieving. Uh, one angle I didn't really talk about so much, but uh, like like this card is a card that I have, I've, I've gotten recently. I didn't really touch on any angles of like investing, speculating, things of that nature. I don't really do much of it. Uh, I, I think my my videos tend a lot more towards flippers or occasionally collectors it, looking at the, the best times to buy situations like that. I, I don't think this is new to most people. Maybe, maybe to some it is. But uh, yeah, I, I just hope this video gave you some kind of useful information or if not, at least entertainment. That's really all I have today. Next week, if I, I'll try to remember to do, I do have the thumbnail, shout out Ernesto. I do have the thumbnail already for analysis paralysis. So I will look to make that video. A lot of the, the best time to sell just comes down to having everything listed. My, my strategy as a business, I have not run an auction in well over a year. I do not intend to. I, I do run auctions occasionally for consigners, but even my consignments are, are primarily by, by an house. And from time to time, people just want to close out their accounts or move on from certain things and run auctions. But yeah, my, my general strategy as a business is to have everything listed all the time at a decent price. I mean, low list buy it now, generally speaking, higher than last auction sale. But And I let the buyers come to me. I let the buyers come to me. If and when I get a massive buy and I need to raise some funding, I will either throw up more quantity of a, of a given booster box. I, I will go slightly lower under market. I will send five, 10% offers. I will run a five to 25% sale on parts of my eBay inventory. But yeah, at the end of the day, um, I don't feel overly rushed to sell anything except for the hot potato plays. When it, when it's ultra modern sealed, when it's something like that, unless it's like evolving skies, unless it's potential reprint, I don't feel overly rushed to sell things like that. The rushed plays, I do sell them rushed. Uh, but the, yeah, it all comes down to the item. It all comes down to the item. It's very case by case basis. Hopefully me going through and showing a handful of different items gave you some insight as to how I operate as a business and, and what my thoughts are around individual items. So yeah, with that, that's everything I've got for today. I appreciate you all watching. I hope you had a great Easter if you celebrated it yesterday. But yeah, with that, I will catch you all later.